This is episode four of my free CCNA course. And a huge shout out to Boson Software, the official sponsor of this CCNA course. They are the reason this can be made available for free. So I highly encourage you to go check them out. They have the absolute best CCNA, CCMP, labs and practice exams, TCP IP and OSI. Networking models that define how we connect our computers. Without these, we wouldn't have networking. So in this video, we're going to watch it happen. We're gonna follow a packet as it goes through a network and how it interacts with each layer. Let's do it. Okay, same scenario as the last video. Johnny wants some delicious Network Chuck coffee. So he needs to go over the internet to access networkchuck.coffee to order some coffee. Let's watch his packets go across the network and we'll analyze the layers as it goes across the network. Let's check it out. Now, I'll say it again. In reality, we're using the TCP IP model, which is this, but for reference, I'm going to use the OSI model. So I'll add in those extra layers, the session layer and the presentation layer. Just gonna add those in there, stack them up. And if you wanna follow along, which I highly encourage you to do that, it's really helpful to watch this actually happen, use your own computer. So I got a link below, download this packet tracer file that I'm about to walk through. Go ahead and do it right now, I'll wait for you. If you pause, otherwise, here we go. So using simulation mode, we'll watch Johnny go all the way across the network to access networkchuck.coffee, which is this server right here, and order some delicious coffee. So let's click on simulation and watch this in bullet time, because it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Now as we go through this, I want you to notice one thing. I have our traffic filtered meaning that I'm only looking at HTTP and HTTPS traffic, web traffic, things you might use to access a website. I'm telling you this because you won't see things that we saw in the last video, like ARP requests to discover a device's MAC address. You won't see a DNS query, so Johnny can discover the IP address in networkchuck.coffee. If you want to see those things, you can. Just go edit the filters right here. You can unlock all those goodies. So we're gonna open up Johnny's laptop here. We're gonna navigate over to his desktop and click on web browser. We're gonna type in https colon whack whack networkchuck dot coffee. And go. Now, nothing happened because we're filtering traffic. Let me step forward in time and watch things happen. There we go. So we see here we have our blue message, our blue packet that Johnny's getting ready to send out. In our simulation panel here, you can actually see we have two separate messages. Why? Well, one is what he's getting ready. The other is what he's sending out to the switch. Let's open up that first one and take a look. I'll just select that first message right here. You can see we have our wonderful seven layers of the OSI, even though we're actually using TCP IP. Again, I'm telling you, the networking world always uses the seven layers, always. So let's analyze this. First, Johnny starts out by using layer seven. What's layer seven? It's our application, layer. What application is he using? Well, we got a message right here. Because we have that layer selected, the HTTP client sends an HTTP request to the server. What that basically means is that Johnny's web browser is attempting to access a website. So simply, this is the application layer. The protocol we're using here is the HTTP protocol. And actually, we're using the HTTPS because it's secure and encrypted. But this is an example of an application layer protocol that is used by things like, hey, your web browser. You're using that right now. So Johnny types in networkchuck.coffee into his web browser. He hits enter and his computer gets to work. And so again, the application protocol we're using is HTTPS. And the computer takes this data and gets it ready to send out. Now at this point, the computer's goal is to get the data all the way down through the layers, down to the physical layer, so it can go across our ethernet cable through the internet to the other server, to the networkchuck.coffee server. But what's happening in all this mess? What's going on? Let's talk about it. Now we're gonna skip these two layers for now. We will go into more detail later. But again, typically they're meshed into the application layer anyhow, so it's okay. Looking back at Packet Tracer, we're on to layer four now. Layer four is our transport layer. For now, the way I want you to think about it is how can we transport the data? How can we get it there? And we really have two main options. We can use TCP or UDP. Now I'm not gonna cover this super in depth right now, but just know that when we use TCP, it's more reliable. It's when we wanna make sure our message actually gets there. We have mechanisms in place to make sure that if it doesn't get there, we can send it again. Whereas UDP is not as reliable as TCP and it's typically seen as a faster transport method. So when it comes to the transport layer, these are the two main options we have. And then we have our ports. Now the destination port here is destination 443. You might recognize this port. 443 is reserved for HTTPS traffic. You might also be familiar with port 80, which is HTTP traffic. Again, we'll cover more in detail later, but just know that that's what's happening right now. So we'll move on down through our layers real quick, put our data down here, and the transport information we're going to use will slap on as a layer four header. We'll attach that to our data. And inside this header are things like, hey, we're gonna be using TCP and we'll be using port 443. Now, what just happened here is important. The process of 
taking our application data and then scooting it on down here and slapping on that layer 4 header. That's called encapsulation. This encapsulation process actually happened up here as well. The web browser encapsulated whatever Johnny wanted to send to the network chuck.coffee server, which is him saying, get me some coffee. It's a message saying, get me some coffee. He encapsulated that into a HTTP header, which is our data. The way I like to see this is, let's say, for example, the data is like a, a message, a letter. We encapsulate that message into a HTTP header, which is our data. When we moved on down to the transport layer, we took that data envelope and we put it inside another envelope. We encapsulated it. And this new envelope has our data inside, and this is our layer 4 header. And that's the way I like to visualize encapsulation. We'll keep taking our letters and just putting them inside other envelopes, other letters, until we get to the bottom, which is our data link. And I'll show you. Oh, and by the way, this message right here, when we have our data encapsulated with a layer 4 header attached, we call this message a segment. And now we're getting into familiar territory. We're at layer 3. Layer 3, again, is our network layer. And if you watched our previous video, you know that layer 3, we're dealing with IP addresses. We're dealing with routers. Love that stuff. So in this layer 3 header, we see that we have our source IP address, and we have our destination IP address. This IP address being Johnny's IP address, and this IP address being the IP address of the networkchuck.coffee server. So we'll drag our segment down onto layer 3, and we'll encapsulate that segment by adding a layer 3 header. And again, our layer 3 header is going to contain the IP address information, and we're basically telling our router where to send this. We're giving our router directions. We're saying, hey, Mr. Router, here's my source IP. This is who the message is from, which is 10.1.1.3, and then the destination IP address, which was 23.227.38.65. Now let's test your memory. You would have learned this from the last video. What is this new message we have? What is it called? What do we call that? If you said packet, you're absolutely right. A packet has all the layers above it, the transport, session, presentation, application, all those layers encapsulated with a layer three header telling the router, hey, here's where you send this info. And now we're at layer two, almost there. Layer two is our data link layer. With data link, our layer two, we're dealing with MAC addresses. We're giving our switch directions to the next stop that our information is taking. In this case, it'll be our router. Here we have the MAC address of Johnny's laptop. And here we have the MAC address of the router. So now we'll move down our packet into layer two. And we'll slap on our layer two header. And layer two will also have a trailer as well. And this will encapsulate it into a message that we call, well, what do we call it? What do we call messages that deal with layer two, that deal with MAC addresses and switches? If you said frames, you got it. This message is indeed a frame. A frame has all of these layers encapsulated down. And inside these layer two headers, we have the directions for the switch, telling the switch where to send his message. So in this case, we have the source MAC address, which is Johnny's MAC address. And then we have the next stop, the destination, which is our router. And that's pretty much it. We've encapsulated all the layers down to a frame. And now we can send that frame over the physical layer, the ethernet cable. So he hits the wire and boom. And actually he's, he's up here. So we, he goes from Johnny to the switch. Let's watch it happen in Packet Tracer. If we step forward in time, we see that frame go to the switch. If we open up that frame, we're only seeing layer one and layer two because the switch can't see anything else. All these layers right here have been encapsulated down into this frame. And when the switch receives this frame, he's got this bulky envelope, but he only opens the first envelope. And he opens it up and goes, oh, well, it's going to this MAC address, which if I look in my CAM table, my MAC address table, I can see that MAC address belongs to this port. I'm going to send it out this port. That's where the router is. See right here, he looked it up and fast Ethernet 06 is the port that the router belongs to. Let's step forward in time and watch it happen. Boom, it goes out to the router. And boom, it also does it here. If we open up that message, the router did indeed receive a frame. And he made sure that it was for him. It came to his MAC address. He will then do the opposite of encapsulation. He'll de-encapsulate it, which basically means he opens the next envelope to see what the next layer says. So he takes a peek at layer 3. And at this point, we're dealing with the packet, with the layer 3 header, the layer 4 header, and the data. The router looks at the layer 3 header, sees where it needs to go, what is the destination IP address, looks in his routing table. He's like, yeah, I know where that goes. I've got my map. I'm a layer 3 guy. And he then proceeds to send it out to the switch. Now, something important happens here. Remember, the switch can only deal with layer two. If you recall from our previous videos, the router has to somehow tell the switch how to get to networkchuck.coffee. He has to tell him his MAC address. Otherwise, the switch will have no idea where to send it because he can't see IP addresses. So after the router learns the MAC address of networkchuck.coffee using ARP, he encapsulates his layer three header, which is the IP address information, inside a new layer two header. And he changed the source and destination MAC address. And he had to change it because before, 
The message he received, the source MAC address was Johnny and the destination was himself. Now he has to change it to being the source is himself and the destination is networkchuck.coffee. So he encapsulates that, it's now a layer two frame and he sends it up to the switch. We'll step forward in time and packet tracer here. The message arrives at the switch if we open that up. Here we are again, switch eyes. We can only see layer two and layer one. The switch looks in his cam table, his MAC address table, sees that, hey, networkchuck.coffee does indeed live on fast ethernet 01, that's where I'm gonna send that sucker. That's where I'm firing these electrical signals. And he does that, let's watch. We step forward in time once more, boom. The frame goes to networkchuck.coffee. If we open that message up, we now have all the layers once more. And here's what just happened. The switch sent this frame to networkchuck.coffee. Now because the server that runs networkchuck.coffee was built obeying the guidelines of the TCP IP model. When it receives a frame, it knows exactly what to do. It'll first do exactly what the router did. Look at the layer two header. Make sure that, hey, this is actually for me. It's my MAC address. Hey, cool. He'll take a look at the layer two header. He'll open up that message and go, oh yeah, this is my MAC address. It's to me, awesome. He'll then de-encapsulate or open up the next message and look at the layer three header and go, huh, look, it's for me too. This is my IP address, awesome. He'll then de-encapsulate it once more, opening up the layer four message and going, oh, hey, we're using TCP. Oh, and awesome, I love 443, we're using port 443. And then he sends it up to the next layer. And then finally, the last layer, the application layer, opens up that last message and goes, oh, it's for me. HTTPS, it's browser information, it's website stuff, awesome. So real quick, a thousand foot view, what Johnny had to do is he had to use the entire TCP IP suite, encapsulating all this stuff down into a frame. And then he sends this frame across the physical network, across ethernet cables and such, touching each device, a switch, a router, another switch, and then finally arriving at networkchuck.coffee. Networkchuck.coffee took that frame and then de-encapsulated the entire thing to look inside and see what was meant for the web browser, the application information. And of course, in this case, the data was a request for his web server. Johnny's wanting to buy some coffee. And Johnny's like, hey, I'm trying to get to the homepage of networkchuck.coffee. Can you give me the homepage so I can shop? So the web server reads that request, which is inside the data, and the whole process starts over again. The networkchuck.coffee server encapsulates all the information into a frame, sends that to the switch, the switch sends it to the router, the router to the switch, the switch to Johnny, and this is what Johnny receives. All right, quiz time. I hope you have your coffee ready because these questions I chose are kind of difficult. Uh, one is from the old CCNA, and one is from the old CCMP route exam. So let's see what you got. Let's go. Question number one. Which of the following functions are performed by the application layer of the OSI model? Select three choices. Now, if you just started studying networking, this could be a, a difficult question for you. But when I encounter a difficult test question, I start with the process of elimination. So let's take out things that we know have nothing to do with the application layer, which again is layer seven. Looking at this, I think D is probably not it at all. Managing logical and physical addressing. When I hear that, I think MAC address is layer two, definitely not layer seven. Another one that you might pick up on is that B is probably not the answer either. Ensuring error-free data delivery between devices. This makes me think transport layer and specifically TCP. TCP gives us reliable delivery of our packets, of our data. So now we're down to four choices and I'm gonna go ahead and select the right answers. And I'll explain why. A, C, and E. Let's see if I'm right. Boom. Now here's the tricky part though. This is correct for the OSI model. So these three options are absolutely applicable to layer seven. The one we didn't select down here, the one we didn't eliminate. This is part of the presentation layer, which is layer six. But as part of the TCP IP model, layer six, layer seven, and even layer five are all clumped together in the application layer. And if we had talked about the presentation layer in detail, you would have known that this is not it, but we didn't. So it's okay if you didn't get this. Now C, and E, we probably could have just guessed that without having even known anything about layer seven. Managing communications between applications, directing data to the correct program. Program is another word for applications. A would have been a bit more fuzzy, but just from the process of elimination, we would have got that one. Question number two, which of the following relies on a three-way handshake in order to provide connection-oriented, reliable, reliable data transfer between networked computers? Select the best answer. Now again, this is a question that has terms you have not learned yet, or possibly. One of those being the three-way handshake. We haven't talked about that yet. But through the process of elimination, we can look at these answers and go, huh, that's probably not that. So for example, ARP. When we talked about routers and switches, we learned what ARP does. It's how a host on a network can find out what MAC address belongs to a certain IP address. 
So that's not it. We can mark off A. DNS, we saw what that was in our router video. DNS helps us map a friendly name like netflix.com or networkchuck.coffee to an IP address. So that's not it. And then down here, even though it looks kind of weird, RARP. <laughs> it stands for reverse ARP. And it's ARP and reverse. You got the MAC address, but you want to find the IP address. So that's not it. Now we have two options, and we just learned about these, didn't we? TCP and UDP are two of the main protocols we can select when we are using the transport layer. Now, out of those two options, which of them do you think provide connection-oriented, reliable data transfer? Well, UDP, no. It's fast, but it's not reliable. TCP, yeah, it is. If we select this answer and see if we're right, we are right. Now, if you got that right, that's impressive. That's a CCMP level question from the old CCMP route. And the route exam, I failed that three times. Three? No, two times. It was a tough exam. Well, guys, that's about it. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments or need help with the CCNA, comment below or jump into my Discord server. I got a link below for that as well. If you want to see more stuff like this, more courses, check out thisisit.io. It's a collaboration between myself and David Bomble. It's pretty cool. Go check it out. Link below. And that was episode four. The OSI model, the TCP IP model. We saw it happen. We saw it happen in real time. In the coming videos, we're going to explore them a bit more, jumping into the upper layers, the application, the presentation, the session, the transport. We're going to dive deeper into those layers. And yeah, that's it. I'll catch you guys later.